All right, guys, another boatload of new fragrance releases. Is there something out there that you're really, really excited about? Perhaps Tom Ford's Oud Wood Parfum, a new fragrance uh, collaboration by Frederick Moll called Acne Studios, a new Liquid Imaginaire, maybe the new JPG Jean-Paul Gaultier Le Mail Flanker. Lots of new goodies I'm going to talk to you about today coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in, it's Sebastian. We're talking about brand spanking new fragrance launches that are soon to drop. Some have already dropped, but uh, most of them are going to drop very, very soon. If there's something you're excited about, the, do let me know what it is that you heard about and you are looking forward to sampling. And if there's something that just launched, what it is that you got your nose on that you were really enjoying, put a comment down below so I can find out. But let's get started so we can get through the video. And in the bonus section after the outro, I'm speaking about for newer Rammstein fragrances. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started with the first fragrance, Tom Ford's Oud Wood Parfum. I mentioned this last year that it was coming and finally it's launching at the beginning of uh, March. It's coming with another fragrance called Neroli Portofino Parfum. Whereas Neroli Portofino Parfum is not new, they had a fragrance called Neroli Portofino Forte. They're just renaming it Parfum because it was a higher concentration version of Neroli Portofino in, in general that just rebranded it. But Tom Ford's Oud Wood Parfum is brand spanking new, and I can't wait to get my nose on this one. It's featuring notes of sandalwood, oud, vanilla, cardamom, patchouli, tonka, amber, vetiver, pink pepper, and rosemary. So basically taking the original and making it a lot more intense. This is the first time they have a parfum concentration in a private blend fragrance. So most likely the price is going to be way up there, really, really high. We shall see how it is. They did come out with an extreme or an intense Tom Ford Oudwood Parfum, which went into the animalic direction with an overdose of castorium. Very animalic. I have a bottle of it. I once in a while pull it out and enjoy it. But uh, I definitely think that Oudwood needs to be intensified because it is a bit on the weak side. So let me know if you're looking forward to Tom Ford's Oudwood Parfum. But also going back to the Neroli Portofino Parfum, which used to be Forte, I really, really loved Neroli Portofino Forte. I felt like it was a long lasting take on the original Neroli Portofino, which I felt like was a bit weak. So the Forte should have notes of Neroli, Orange Blossom, Bergamot, Blood Orange, Woods, Musk, Lavender, Basil, Galbanum, and Leather. So they've added some intense note notes in the uh, Neroli Portofino, where the original is very light, thin, transparent, airy. This one seems to have a lot more depth. They've added leather, the lavender, galbanum, there's woods in here, there's musk. So I really, really enjoyed the Forte. So looking forward to seeing the Parfum. But moving on, Frederick Mall. this is a speculation so far, no official announcement. But Frederick Mall is doing a collaboration with a clothing brand called Acne Studios. And so a lot of people have mentioned, is it going to be a redo of Dries Van Noten? I'm not sure if that fragrance will actually ever relaunch as, as a new collaboration. I have a personal, I personally feel this should be a brand spanking new release. Like I wouldn't do a hand-me-down for my clothing brand, fashion brand. If, 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 if I was doing a collaboration. So, so uh, I mentioned, I've mentioned that, yeah, that's what I've heard, but I think this will be a new fragrance. I don't have any details on it yet. It did sound a bit weird, but it is a clothing house called Acne Studios, and I believe it's a brand fashion house from Sweden. So it's a collab with them. It's a new fragrance from Frederick Mall, and the, as soon as we find out more info on that, we, I will report on it. But next, BDK's new fragrance, Named after their flagship store in Paris, it's 312 Saint Honoré. I actually went to the opening uh, party in Paris. I was invited and I got to experience the beautiful store. It's a really great looking store. Very, very airy, tall ceilings and like a library, but very minimalistic. You probably caught my video already. If you haven't, please do. But the fragrance actually captures that airiness of the store perfectly. It's a very transparent, light, musky, citrus floral, vegetal, powdery fragrance, if I should say. It's Angelica Root, Orange Blossom, Iris, Tonka, Ambroxan, Ambrostar, White Musk, Thai Oud, Pink Pepper. So it's, 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 those, it's for those people that like these kind of airy, 
musky powdery fragrances. You'll definitely notice the angelica root. You'll definitely notice the orange blossom. You'll definitely notice the iris. And then all those molecular notes like the ambroxan and ambrostar. It does sit close to the skin, but there's a, there's a place for these kind of fragrances. If you're burnt out on wearing heavy fragrances and you want something, that's the kind of time I, I like these kind of fragrances. Or this fragrance, 312 Saint Honoré, for me also feels like I can use it to layer or boost up other fragrances. Like for me, this fragrance uh, is, it's got the orange blossoms, it's got the iris, got the angelica root. You can take prob dominant fragrances with those notes and use this to intensify. Let's say you want to intensify the angelica root in the 312 Saint Honoré. Let's say you want to intensify the orange blossom note or the iris note. You can do to and even ambroxan. So you can totally do that with this fragrance. But go and catch my video on 312 Saint Honoré. It also features uh, some shots uh, of the store from uh, the the BDK, the, the brand new store, and also a little video that I shot with the owner of uh, BDK, David Benedek. And then uh, after the outro, you can also catch David Benedek talking at the launch party at the most beautiful library. Uh, catch that video. So Jean-Paul Gaultier has a new fragrance called Le Male Lover. This one sounds pretty exciting for me. And I like the combination of vanilla and peppery notes. It has vanilla, white pepper, ambergris. That's basically the only notes I see really, with a really great looking bottle. So looking forward to trying this one. I feel like Le Male Elixir was one of the best male designer fragrances for men out there. And so let's see what they do with this one. I can't find a perfumer for it, but Le Male Elixir is uh, in Quinton Beach. So I think he's kind of pretty much taken over the Le Male fragrances, but we shall see who it is. But moving on to Givenchy's Collection Particulier fragrance, a brand new one in the darker bottle, the Oud fragrances. It's fantastic. And this one features notes of myrrh, incense, Malaysian Oud. Recently, I shot a video on smell like a church. So most likely this will smell like a church. I haven't got my nose on it, but it sounds really exciting. Or it could be kind of boring as well. We shall see because some some of the incense fragrances can get a bit boring and too resinous and too dark and too cold. But um, I'm curious to get my nose on Givenchy Fantasque from the La Collection Particulière fragrances. Are you guys fans of this collection? Nobody talks about them and they're not really widely distributed either. So it's a bit disappointing that maybe because Givenchy had a higher end luxury collection before this one, maybe I think people are burnt out on Givenchy's uh, luxury collection. All right, moving on to Burberry, it's Hero Parfum. Yep, this is the third flanker from this collection. I believe it's still created by Aurelien Guichard, uh, the man behind the brand Matier Premier. So the perfumer behind that brand, I should say. So this is the Parfum edition. We had a original Eau de Toilette and we have the Eau de Parfum and now we have the Parfum. The Eau de Parfum for me went a bit animalic. I don't know if you guys noticed that. But this version sounds interesting with amorous, cedar wood and cypriol. So very woody and a bit resinous ambery as well. So we shall see how it is. It sounds like pretty interesting, but it is a designer after all. But moving on to the next fragrance, it's Sospiro's Maraschino. And I've been a fan of Sospiro's Dolce Melodia. And I should say, if you haven't gotten your last kit just launched a couple days ago, Kit number nine, right there. This is the new kit with new bottles and it does feature Dolce Melodia. Having a little bit of focusing issue right there. Okay. So the three fragrances in the kit were Dolce Melodia, Royal Incense and Bianco Latte. I have it linked in the info box. Uh, this one is a really popular, we have the new bottles and new crimping on the kits, so there shouldn't be any leakage unless, I don't know, sometimes heat does uh, create some leakages, but uh, take advantage of that kit. But moving on to that Sospiro Maraschino, I feel like this is basically a cherry focused fragrance with cherries, orris, vanilla, vetiver, tonka, jasmine, almond, sandalwood, musk, patchouli, heliotrope, amber, rose, apples, strawberries, peaches, lots of fruity notes with the, uh, the cherry notes. And to me, when I'm reading the notes, it does sound like some other cherry focused fragrances. It could be in a completely different direction. Who knows? But I'm curious to get my nose on it because I really, really love Dolce Melodia. Loved it so much to, in, you know, to be able to feature it in Sun Club Kit. And so I want to get my nose on Maraschino. If anybody's got their nose on it, do let me know. Moving on to Floris' latest fragrance. It's called Wild. 
I think it's a fragrance based on Oscar Wilde, and it's a fragrance that features benzoin, carnation, ginger, bergamot, marine notes, jasmine, sandalwood, lemon blossom, olibanum. Carnation is not a note that gets used widely lately, but this one does feature it. I don't know if it's going to go classic. There is a classic smell to carnation when it uh, is featured in fragrances, but the feature of benzoin and ginger Marine notes, no, but the other notes sound really, really great. Benzoin is always a great note for me, and then mixing it with carnation and ginger sounds really, really fantastic. The only thing about this fragrance I'm not liking is the marine notes. We'll see. Maybe it's nice. Maybe it's pleasantly blended in. Who knows? But uh, definitely curious to try Floris's new fragrance called Wild. So Zerjoff is doing an anniversary edition of Alexandria 2. Are you guys fans of Alexandria 2? I think Alexandria 2 is one of the most popular Zerzhov fragrances next to something like Naxos. So it's a given that they're doing an anniversary edition of, of it. But is it changed up? Are the notes different? It's Oud, Lavender, Rose, Vanilla, Amber, Aura, Cipriol, Sandalwood, Cumin, Cardamom, Clary, Sage, Musk, Civet, Mint, and Wormwood. The notes do seem a bit different than the original fragrance. So maybe they're remixing it or changing it up or something. But curious to get my nose on it. It's in a really fantastic looking bottle. But moving on to Fleur. Fleur has a new fragrance called Strawberry Letter. Is strawberry the next fruit? Is cherry dead? I thought bananas were going to be big. This fragrance is created by Gabriella Celleru, who is the perfumer for a lot of KLE fragrances. Fleur's strawberry letter features notes of French strawberries, black currant leaves, plum, nectar, apple blossom, red poppies, wild lily, amber, tonka, and woods. Fruit bomb, most likely. Who's a fan of Fleur? I enjoy some of their fragrances. I think they have some really uh, fun releases. And this one seems like it's going to be fun and playful, especially when they add the note of strawberry. To me, it goes very young, fruity, playful, bit girly, kids, child. But I don't know, sometimes some notes that are thrown in there with the other notes make it a bit more mature. But this next one I'm really, really looking forward to from the house of Atelier Materi. It's called Cedre Figalia. So it's cedar with figs created by Salim Perdriel, I think that's her, that's her last name, a uh, perfumer that has done some fragrances for Atelier Materi. And this is featuring notes of cedar, dry woods, fig milk, fig leaves, mate, spinach, basil, bergamot, Jamaican pepper. Usually I've seen the note of figs and fig leaves and fig milk combined with sandalwood, but I'm liking the idea of it being combined with cedar. I love cedar as a note, the cedars of Lebanon, and I love the smell of cedar, especially the ones that are ones that you put in your closet to, you know, ward off, uh, you know, what do you call it? Um, moth, moths. Um, so I like that smell, but I haven't found one that's really authentic that smells like that as a fragrance. But this, this fragrance does sound great because I like figs and also cedar as a note, especially when it's just not the cedar because the figs in this fragrance, Cedre Figalia, are what's making it kind of exciting for me. Because as I mentioned, sometimes basically just woods make it a bit boring. So something needs to be in there to give it a boost of excitement. So this one sounds pretty interesting. Let me know if it sounds great to you. So Imaginary Authors has a new fragrance called The Language of Glaciers. It's a new one that features some very interesting notes of Blue Bugle, Cashmere, Forget-Me-Not, Juniper, Lilac, Snow, Weymouth Pine. So this one seems frosty and also spring-like. For me, anytime I see lilac in fragrances, it's going to be very spring-like because it smells like spring to me. But it seems like it's spring creeping up on, you know, the snow, the pine and everything. So I'm, I'm very, very curious to get my nose on this one. The previous fragrance that was launched, limited edition, the Boozy Gourmand, that fragrance is no longer. So I think it's uh, came out as a limited edition. But now that uh, that's uh, being shelved, this new one, The Language of Glaciers, is being released. Has anybody gotten their nose on it? Let me know. Put a comment down and let me know what you think about it. Moving on to Born to Stand Out, Wabi Sabi. Man, they're cranking out the fragrances, but this particular fragrance is a limited edition to, I think the store was called Beams. I actually saw the store while I was traveling in Japan. I think it's a Japanese chain. I'm not 100% sure that's where I saw it for the first time. And I believe it's a uh, it's not a limited edition. It's a uh, exclusive for this particular chain. It's created by Margot Le Pai Garan once again. It's woods, ambergris, ambroxan, saffron, vanilla, white musk, hinoki, cypress, elemi, frankincense, black currant, jasmine, absolute. A lot of interesting things. I don't know if I'll ever be able to get my nose on this one. Who knows? I wish I knew it was out back then when I was in Japan to go sniff it, but I, I think it's just 
rolling out, so it's going to be difficult. If any of you living in Japan, have you gotten your nose on Wabi Sabi? Has it made it to the stores yet? Do let me know. Put a comment down. Moving on to the House of Parlement de Parfum. It's Comet Paradis 62. I did get to sample this while I was in France. Quick smell. While I was in Printemps, it's created by Michel Almarac, really great perfumer with cocoa, coconut, musk, New Caledonian sandalwood, Venezuelan tonka beans. So this one seems like, I don't know, is it redundant to Milk Musk? Or is it Milky Musk? I think it's Milky Musk from the same brand because it's a sandalwood fragrance, it's milky, but this one seems a bit more coconutty, cacao, musky. So I'd like to compare it and, you know, side by side, wear it, test it. Sounds interesting. I like creamy sandalwood notes and I've Felt like this was fairly creamy, but this one compared to Milky Musk seems a bit more with the uh, substance. There's a lot more things happening, whereas the other one is a Milky Sandalwood. And this one has that cocoa, coconut, musk, tonka, you name it. So we'll see how it is. But if you've gotten your nose on Comet Paradis 62, let me know. Put a comment down below so I can find out. And last but not least, we have a fragrance from the house of Le Liquid Imaginaire. It's Ame du Cœur. I think that's how you say it, created by Louise Turner. Are you a fan of Liquid Imaginaires? What are your favorite fragrances from this house? I do like some of their fragrances. I think it's a great house uh, with some great releases, a very French house. And I like the, the caps on these bottles as well. As well. This Ame de Cour has notes of Akigala wood, vetiver, gayak wood, pink and black pepper, cypress, cedar, tonka, grapefruit, vanilla, cacao, plums, raisins, pomeros, apples, rose, blood oranges, mandarin, cardamom, ginger. Man, there's a lot of things happening in this one. I hope it wears kind of substantial, like with all the notes that are in here. But I'm liking the sound. Louise Turner is a Givaudan perfumer. And it's a given that she is because they're using this proprietary ingredient called Akigala wood. And a lot of uh, Givaudan perfumer created fragrances. But yeah, this one sounds great. Amit Kerr. I do enjoy some of Louise Turner's fragrances. I'm looking forward to getting my nose on Amit Kerr. If you've gotten your nose on it, do let me know. Put a comment down below so I can find out. And that's basically it today. And except for the bonus fragrances, I'm going to talk about some Rammstein fragrances. There's four of them. But let me know which fragrance sounds exciting to you that are soon to launch or that have launched. If you've gotten your nose on anything new that you like what is it put a comment down below so i can find out thanks so much for watching today if you have any questions or comments please list below please like this video please share it follow me on instagram and facebook and i'll be back with more videos very soon have a good one goodbye all right some bonus options here these are four fragrances from rammstein I kept this uh, portion of the video as a bonus section because Rammstein fragrances are so hard to get. They're exclusively sold in EU and mostly in Germany at drugstores and things like that. And their fragrances are, you know, around 40 bucks, 45 bucks or 45 euros or whatever. So it's Rammstein's Paris for him. Notes of apples, musk, jasmine, cedarwood, oak moss, pineapple, patchouli, bergamot, pink pepper. I wrote down in my notes, does this smell like Aventus? Because to me, it sounds like the notes of Aventus. Who knows? Maybe they're doing a Aventus flanker. Then uh, we've got two more. Rammstein's Gasoline. This one sounds really, really great. I like the idea of this one. Fragrances that smell like gasoline. Because as I was, as a kid, I always liked it when my dad or mom went to the gas station. I could, I could smell that smell of how the gasoline smells. So this one sounds very, very interesting. It's gasoline, asphalt, ink, burnt match, leather, birch tar, graphite, and musk. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I like what the, the direction of this brand and what they do. Very edgy, weird fragrances, except for the one that sounds like Aventus, obviously. And the last but not least, we started out with something for him, and now we've got something for her. It's Engel Dark for her. And this one features notes of cashmere wood, sandal wood, figs, black currant, ylang ylang, anise, magnolia. So this one and the for him sound like the most mass markety. And the two fragrances in between the, the pussy dark one and the gasoline sound a bit more edgy for me. But yeah, I, I'm curious to try this uh, Engel Dark for her. Sounds kind of musky, woody, fruity. Is it figs or is it fig f leaves? It just says figs, so most likely it's the fruits. But if you're a fan of Rammstein's fragrances, do let me know. I do have a big collection of the brand. I might have to do a video on the house as, with as much fragrances as I have. I'm curious to get my nose on these, but it's gonna be very, very difficult. But if you're curious now to catch a video on Rammstein's fragrances, I do have a couple here and there on the channel. But stay tuned for another video sometime within the next couple of months. Uh, as I'm heading to Europe in a bit, and hopefully I can acquire a few more Rammstein fragrances or find them somewhere to purchase, and I'll bring them back and talk about them. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Have a good one. Bye-bye.